Matt Bryan's 55-yard field goal kept the Falcons undefeated as they moved to 6-0. But Eric, as we're going to break down our snap judgments, it was not a pretty game for the Falcons in a 23-20 win over the Raiders. Start to see some holes in their game and some bright spots for Oakland as well. Well, you know, maybe they're limping into the bye week just a little bit. Obviously, 6-0 is a lot better than 5-1, and and they'll take some good things from this victory. Uh, I mean, Matt Ryan threw three picks. They were able to respond from that. That's the good thing. The bad thing is that they were open receivers running free all day. Some missed tackles by those. Uh, defenders on the Falcons side and you know not enough big plays uh, in the passing game for the Falcons now they came back and won but we'll see there's some things they have to clean up the next two weeks. Well, one big play in the passing game was Asante Samuel That's catching right. the pass from Carson Palmer taking it all the way back for a big touchdown. Now on the other end of the spectrum you got the Cleveland Browns they get their first win of the season 34-24 in-state rival against the Bengals Brandon Whedon threw a couple touchdowns, so Browns fans can kind of finally be happy about a victory. Well, Jimmy Haslam is going to be introduced on Tuesday, assuming the owners approve him, and so that's a good way to start with, uh, with his career with the Browns as owner. So it was a gutsy performance. Montero Hardesty replacing uh, Trent Richardson midway through the game. The defense getting a pick six. That secondary had been much maligned uh, throughout the season. So a big victory. It's a huge loss for the Bengals, too, considering the, uh, you know, the, the Ravens and the Steelers. They could have kept pace and at least uh, you know, made it a fight there in the AFC North. And they lose the top. And the Browns got Joe Hayden back in that game. That's Certainly right. helps in that secondary. And you talked about the AFC North kind of the Ravens and Steelers getting ahead of the Bengals. You look to the AFC East with the Jets and Dolphins, two teams. The Jets certainly laughing stocks the past couple weeks. The right. Dolphins were in August at least. Both those teams get nice victories on Sunday. They're both 3-3 three and three now, so that division and that wild card race in the AFC is going to continue to be exciting to watch. Yeah, pretty interesting. Everyone's ready to write off the Jets. They came up with a you know kind of a hard performance, short week, and obviously a, a banged up Colts team that came into here, but a, a defensive performance. And this is the formula they wanted to play all year. You know, play that great uh, you know game-changing defense. Kamardi was outstanding. The pass rush got to luck. They picked him off several times, and Sean Green with one of his best games as a pro. So that helped. And the Dolphins, I can't say enough about this team. You know, they're going to be kicking themselves later down the road for those two overtime losses, but uh, they've got some heart and they beat off a, a pesky Rams team today for an important victory. Yeah, Greg the Leg zero line finally found his kryptonite. Right. A 66 yard <laughs> field goal attempt that he could not make that would have sent the game to overtime. But yeah, the Dolphins 3-3, three and three, the Jets are 3-3 three and three as well. Those are our snap judgments from the early games in week six. To see all our analysis from week six, be sure to check out the website, profootballweekly.com.